for some reason, it's always in the morning that I'm most resistant towards it. Like I, I could get really easily into Anapanasati uh, meditations um, throughout my day, but it's just always in the morning. I know you always kind of, um, even people always kind of advise me, like in the morning, once you wake up, you know, you could do a quick, um, just meditation, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. But it's always in the morning that I have this aversion towards it. <laughs> I, 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 in the afternoon, in the evening, before I sleep, there's less resistance, but it's always in the morning. Um, I don't know. I just want to say that. All right. It, it, well, let's talk yeah. about that resistance. What do you mean by resistance? Well, I, there was this. You want to have a I, bad day. That's it, huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> when you put it that way, it kind of sounds like it. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's... Because the Anapanasati would have things like, wow, today's going to be a good day. And then you say, oh, I don't want to have a good day. I don't want to practice being happy and joyful. Yeah, it's weird. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of that has to do with the waking up process. Mm -hmm. When we wake up first in the morning, we're not fully awake. Yes. And so helping us to become awake is just to talk of to ourselves about, well, things are going to be okay today. Yeah, I can do this. I have time. I can lay here in bed, open my eyes so I can see clearly. And meanwhile, that feeling, like for instance, you were you were mentioning that when you were sitting, you noticed that the throat is dry. Yes. Also, that's a good time in the morning, but any time that you remember to practice is to remember to experience the body. For instance, you were sniffling when you first called and that you can do something about that. You can Now, what you're doing is just wiping off the excess snot that's rolling down your, your nose. A good thing to do was to um, take that stuff in both directions. One direction is to blow it out completely to go ahead and empty it out through strong exhale through the nose. You can even do it on one side and then the other to put some pressure behind it. And then the other way is to suck it back up into the top like that. And then you can pull it down into the throat and then spit it out. Yes. And that will clear out things mostly. If it doesn't, then I would recommend that you get um, uh, all there's many different possibilities of inhalers, um, uh, antihistamines. In the old days, in the time of the Buddha, they would take water and put it in the cup of their hand, and then they would hold their nose. Hmm, yeah, okay. Hold her nose like this on one side with the thumb and breathe in that water through the left nostril and then hold the nose on the right and take in that water through the other side. And then you inhale it strongly. <laughs> and then pull it down from the back. And you'll always get something. Yeah. Now, the thing about the nostrils is that they have a job to do, and there's. Part of this uh, of, of the head all around the back of the eyes down into the uh, jaw muscles It's a huge part 
I wouldn't say it's anywhere near as big as the brain, but it's still a very large cavity. Yes. Or another way of calling it in the old days, in the time of the Buddha, they called it a cave. Now that uh, that sinus area that we're talking about has a job to do. And that when you're sniffling like that, that proves that it's doing its job and that you need it to, to help it because it's done its job. And what is its job to do? Is to collect pollution. Is the number one thing. To take the air that's dirty instead of letting dirty air into your lungs, which will happen if you breathe through your mouth. But if you breathe through the nose, it will get stopped up with pollution. That's why snot is always white or clear. It's colored. It's colored with the pollution that comes out of the air. It also has the quality of disinfecting and a lot of white blood vessels will get caught there. Okay, so cleansing is the main job, but it also has another job to do, and that is to warm and moisten the air to make it easier to breathe. And so you owe that body of yours to keep the sinuses clean and open as best you can. This is actually part of Anapanasati. Is to clean things out. To clean it out of the nostrils, to clean it out of the sinuses, and to clean it out of the mind. Yes. And you can oh. do that when you first wake up in the morning and start to pay attention to what the body is doing. Start recognizing that you're, you know why your throat is dry? Yes. Not because you haven't been drinking water, it's because you've been breathing through your mouth. Yes. And that dries <laughs> it out. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's true. Uh, that's very true. <laughs> Sometimes I was just not aware. And yes, that's what this practice is all about, is to start to become aware so that you can take care of the body, so that it'll take care of you. Whatever you are. It's, it's interesting, because now that you said it, I realize um, waking up in the morning, well, not all the time, but I will say usually uh, there's, I'm not sure, well, at least I feel like there's an aversion to myself, to my body system or whatever that means. Uh, there's this, I'm not sure why, but it just ha- it just somehow clicks to me. Um, but I mean, only in the morning. I don't feel that in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, before I sleep, but yeah maybe it's just not a habit of mine all right well there's one thing about it and that is is that even if you're not aware of it gravity has an issue that when you're laying down gravity works differently than when you're up and around in fact the reason that you keep wiping your nose is because of gravity why because the stuff is going downhill and that what you can do is instead of having it go downhill this way, you can suck it back up and then let it go downhill into the throat. And then you can relieve it and spit it out. But in fact, by rubbing your nose the way that you're doing, you're going to make your nose sore. And so it's better to become aware of what you're doing and to take care of it. Will, will, I just realized uh, before this call, I was kind of sleepy. Um, like I understand I have like things to do, things to finish, and it's almost like I'm I'm trying to ignore the fact that I was sleepy. Would it, would, would it, 
I think I kind of answered my own question. It's like, I was trying to ask, would it be good to be aware that I was feeling sleepy? And I feel it's, it's so funny that there's a part of me kind of trying to ignore that I'm sleepy. Like, oh, I'm not feeling sleepy. I'm all right. I'm, I'm good. Um, I'm not sure how that works, to be honest. But well, my, my... It would work together that, in fact, if you took the time to clean out your sinuses, um... <laughs> and that would wake you up. Now, there, uh, there is a hindrance that is, uh, oh, I've forgotten the poly. Sorry about that. But it's generally <laughs> translated into the English as sloth and torpor. But yes. those are 19th century words. Mm-hmm. Our modern technology or our modern language would be sleepy and uh, dull. The mind is dull. And the reason yes. that the mind is dull is because it's generally not getting oxygen. Yes. And in fact, that's why people yawn is when they're not breathing well. Yes. 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 Oh, my God. And yeah. So the yawn reflex is a, is a reflex to take in a lot of air. <gasps> like that but in fact intentionally yawning is a good thing to do it it also sounds like it's a good question to ask myself what kind of breathing right now feels the most comfortable the most good right like Mm -hmm. i could think about that and take good care of my body and then it could overcome that sleepiness Mm -hmm. Now, one thing about the um, uh, the standing up, as we were starting to talk about gravity, that when you're standing up, then that starts to pull all of that mucus down, and we will generally swallow it absent-mindedly, rather than doing it intentionally. Yes. <laughs> okay, so begin to spend some time checking out how is your breathing? Is it obstructed in any way? Because that also has the quality of being tired, being sleepy, being uh, dull. It's because we're not breathing well. And part of the reason we're not breathing well is, is that uh, there's obstructions in the body. But there's a much better way of saying it, and that is is that we get dull and sleepy because we're not paying attention to what the body's doing. Yes. And that if we start paying attention to what the body's doing, then we won't get so dull. But in fact, this is one of the problems with people practicing some meditation that requires them to sit for long periods of time and the last two thirds of that uh, sitting is generally done in a dull state. Yes. And that dull state then is often what people want because they call it some fancy name like jhana, where in fact it's just a mind that's dull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes so much sense, like, yes. Now, the important point is, is that while the poor jhanas are there, the Buddha recognized after he had been the very best poor jhana dude in town, the best in India of the time, and he recognized that that was not the path of what the solution to the problem that he was trying to solve. And yet in modern times, they say, well, a four has got to be better than a one. Therefore, let's try all of these jhanas. And they wind up getting themselves into a dull state. But in fact, the first jhana is a very pleasant state. It's energetic because we're breathing well. And then we can see clearly because we're not dull. Yes. Yes. Uh, Damato, are you saying that people want the fourth jhana so bad they rush to it and then they just like exactly 
and oh. that in fact it, the first jhana in order to do any of the higher jhanas the first jhana must be well developed oh and here's an example would be music when i was in high school i would listen to records of concertos i would get the sheet music out i had students who were better than i was and in fact in one case uh, this guy wanted to play rhapsody in blue the piano part and i played the orchestra part never mind the piano part i wasn't up to the orchestra part And there was other pieces of music that I wanted to play, but I didn't have the fingering, the technique, the practice down solidly to be able to play highly complex music like Chopin and Beethoven and Franz Liszt and that kind of stuff. Brockman and Ox piano concertos were beyond me. Okay, and that was because I wasn't practicing well. This is exactly the same thing that's true with practicing Anapanasati, practicing meditation. One must become skilled at the first jhana, skilled in the way of being able to easily get into it, skilled in the way of being able to maintain it, and skilled in the way of coming out of it in one of two directions. One direction is to come out of the first jhana by going into the second jhana. And the other one is to coming out of the first jhana without going into hindrances. To going back mm -hmm. into the ordinary state of mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what that's generally called is access concentration is the English language translation. But it's not concentration. But it is having to do something to do with access in the sense that you can come back into the first jhana easily. Mm. And so this is what we're actually practicing is coming into a very good, happy state and then being able to maintain that. And part of that is doing the job with the body to get the body in a good enough state so that it's not dopey, not tired, energized not dull, can breathe well. And now then there are no tensions in the body, so the body can relax. And this is all part of the practice. Now, a lot of people think that they have to take one object of meditation. The problem with that is, is that Anapanasati has a whole bunch of different objects. Mm -hmm. Yes. The body is just not one object. There's a whole lot of objects associated with the body, as well as the object of the mind. What kind of state of mind are you in? Are you in the state of mind of, I can handle this, I can do this. Wow, this is great. Are you a victim instead? Oh, this is so hard to do. Oh, I forget. Oh, I'm dull in the morning. I just realized I, I tend to become this sort of victim mindset when there's a lot of liking and disliking. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. But when I just say, hey, it's OK, everything's good enough, it it prevents me from going there. Um, Into that hindrance of wanting things that you don't have. And oftentimes we don't even know what it is that we want. Of course, we're not going to get it. We don't even know what it is. Ah, it's all subtle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so recognize we're in a state of wanting and say, hey, whatever it is I want right now, I, I can't get it. So let me just be satisfied without it. Yes. So this is the way to practice. Is to get the body safe, secure, comfortable, and I mean comfortable in the sense that you can breathe well, comfortable in the sense that you can sit up straight, comfortable in the sense that you can start to relax, that there's no anxiety and tension in the body. Now, 
sometimes and previously often I would wake up with some sort of tightness in the chest that most people would call anxiety. But it's easy enough to talk one into, oh, it's going to be okay. Let's take a few deep breaths. Just breathe well. Mm. And that tightness in the chest relaxes. Mm. Now, here's the thing about it is, is that if we don't know there's any tightness or tension in the chest, then subconsciously we will call that anxiety. Oh, something's wrong because I don't feel comfortable. Yes. And then we start going over all, all the problems in the world. <laughs> yes. Only making it worse. Instead of seeing it directly as just some tension, just some tightness, just some heaviness in the chest, and then we can breathe into that with happy thoughts like, oh, this is going to go away. Oh, this is just part of waking up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And that was the part I was averse to. If I could just see that, yeah, there's tension, I could breathe well, I can try to breathe. Yeah. I think that's something I was averse to. And I, yes. <laughs> Ah, yes, a good sigh, a big smile. <laughs> I was smiling because I catch myself. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, catch yourself in a friendly way. Oh, there I go again. Or, oh, Mara, I see you. I see you as a tightness of the chest. I see you as uh, a stuffy nose. <laughs> And so your job is to take care of the body, and you can do that job happily. You can enjoy cleaning out the sinuses. Like, for instance, oh, I've got the left side free. At least I've got that much done. Now, here's another thing that's really amazing, and that is, is that which side of the bed, or excuse me, which side of your body you're sleeping on, often then, the one that's closest to the floor, closest to the pillow, the one that's closest to the bed is the one that gets stopped up the most. Yes. And the other one is open. And so an easy thing to do is to roll over from your left side to your right side, say, and change the gravity. And then after less than a minute or so, the uh, the part that was on the lower part because of the gravity is now beginning to shift and move and now you can breathe really well because you're cleaning it out it'll start to move and then you can suck it back and and uh, get it into the mouth to spit it out so this means that you need to have kleenex beside your bed so that you can spit that stuff in or you can blow your nose heartily to clean that stuff out. It's your obligation, it's your duty to your body, duty to the Dhamma. Your sinuses is doing a good job. You know they've been doing a good job because they're clogged up. So it's almost like cleaning in a wholesome way, like we clean it not like you know, what says, oh, I dislike the I dislike that. It's just like this is nice. I can make myself feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I can breathe. I mean, breathing is marvelous stuff. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It's so Keeps easy. You alive. If you don't breathe, you don't live. And so it's important to keep the, the body open. This is why Buddha referred to it as Anapanasati, mindfulness of your breathing. How do you breathe? How good is it? Is it doing your, is the, are you doing what you need to do to help your body breathe correctly? Are you just letting it go? 
without thinking much about it and not liking it when you find something that needs to be done. I think I now this conversation also helped me to realize. I, I think why work in the morning was so hard for me was I'm 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 so scared to find this disliking because I know I had this tendency to oh I don't like this I don't I, that's why I kind of stay away from it. <laughs> but now that I catch that now I can see yeah well it doesn't have to be that way. I see. All right. If you're in the habit of not liking, then let's try this one. Let's stop liking or not liking. Yes. Let's start not liking the not liking and start to change that into liking. But this is good. Instead of, oh, poor me, my nose is stopped up. It's just, yeah, let's have a ball. Let's clean that thing out. <sighs> <laughs> Actually, I'm calling also because I, I, I know this hindrance of mine, of liking and disliking. Um, it, it has a lot to do, I'm not sure how to phrase this, basically, let's say when I'm cleaning my room, it's so easy for me to see something and there's this, well, not all the time, but sometimes it just happens. There's this very strong disliking, and it's like I hate this, and then I catch myself feeling that way. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I I I I I understand. I can get into like having fun with it instead of disliking. I, yeah, it's it's just it's just a small problem that I I always notice about myself. Like it's 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 almost like I'm programmed into subconsciously wanting that disliking. It's like oh I dislike this so it can get me into action, but that actually is not wholesome. It, it it's just not good to my practice. So I don't know. It I guess it's just I just have to catch myself, right? I just have to see oh I'm feeling that way, right? It, I, yeah, it you have to remember that it's your choice. You don't have to feel bad and not like feeling bad. You've got a mm -hmm. choice. Can you remember? You've got a choice. I've got a choice. i got a choice. Yes. Yes, i got a choice. So you can you take the right effort. You can do that. Yes. So it's like, in the moment when that happened, I have a choice. I I, I can choose not to react that way. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the hardest. <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, yeah, I shouldn't say it's hard. But well, it's an old habit you've developed. You're in the habit yeah. of not liking it, an old poor me, and now you recognize you have to practice making a choice. You have to practice remembering that you've got a choice here. Yes. Yes. I, I read something about Buddhism that say there's this state of voidness that is beyond liking and disliking. Um, would that also be part of the practice? Like I don't have to force myself to be there, but you know, if, as I gladden my mind, it will naturally be there. Actually, the real poison is our stupidity, our ignorance, our delusion that this is how things are, rather than recognizing, no, we have a choice about it. Once we see how things are, we can, in fact, change that. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that you yeah. can begin to choose how you feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, 
there is a kind of uh, liking that goes to wanting, which goes then to grasping and clinging and poor me's and bad attitudes and hell states and dukkha. Yes. But it has to do with ignorance. Yes. That liking is not necessarily bad when it is under control. Yes. Okay. It's like you would give a child a horse that is well trained so that the little child, the little girl can get on that horse in safety. You don't want to give a child a wild horse that has yeah. never been trained. Mm hmm. Because she's not trained and the horse is not trained. And yes. that's how most people live their lives. The child inside has to deal with a very unruly um, mental attitude called this, um, the super ego. This full of laws, rules, things to do yes. like it's got its own mind. Okay. And so it, the right way to handle that then is to come out of that critical thinking, to come out of that into nurturing yourself. You're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. This is all easy. This is an easy pony to ride. It's not going to be a bunking Bronco. It's going to be easy. So that's the attitude that we can take. And that attitude requires us to remember to practice that attitude. Don't be so hard on yourself. Wow, you're so hard on yourself. <laughs> you're so critical. That's an old habit. You can change that habit. One yes, thought at a time when you remember. Yes. And the more yeah, you practice, the more you'll remember, and then the easier it'll become to come out of that state. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes, thank you, Dama. All right. Well, let's go ahead and finish now and you go practice. Yes, go practice having fun breathing. Go practice having fun cleaning things out. Go practice mm. having fun not liking, not liking. <laughs> oh, well. Start oh, well. liking, liking. Not like. Wisely. Wisely. All right. Well, we'll see you later. See you later.